What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods, and we are back with our final Week 12 college football preview of the week. And we got another SWAT game of the week, man. Y'all know what that means. Comment your score predictions below. Enter the $50 giveaway if you predict the correct winner and score of the game. And go ahead and let me know what your thoughts are on this game. If you're new, smash the subscribe button and hit the like button on the video now. But we have one of the biggest and best robberies in, in, in probably the entire country, man, we have the 76th installment of the Florida Classic this weekend in Orlando, Florida, as FAMU and Bethune-Cookman face off 2.30 p.m. Central Time live on ESPN3. And, you know, I, I, this game this weekend not only has FCS playoff implications on the line, bragging rights for the rest of the year, and all the eyes of, of the country potentially on Camping World Stadium this weekend down in Orlando. But, I mean, this one has a lot riding for both schools. Like I said, got the FCS playoff implications for FAMU, and you have a potential three-game win streak for Bethune-Cookman going into the offseason to give them a lot of momentum into next year for head coach Terry Sims and this Wildcats team. Let's set the stage real quick, and then we'll get into breaking down the game. But the Rattlers come into this one 8-2, and 6-1 and one in the swag. They're on a seven-game win streak, stretching all the way back to week three, and are fighting for the first SWAC bid to the FCS playoffs since 1997. I was, guys, I was one year old when that happened. So, I mean, it's been a long time, and FAMU has a great chance to do it as the selection committee meets on Sunday. Now, all the pressure is going to be on Willie Simmons' squad, but this team has shown all season long that they can answer to adversity. They can they can respond to the pressure. So I'm expecting a very motivated and fired up FAMU team this weekend in Orlando. Now, the Wildcats, on the other hand, they enter this one two and eight, two and five in the SWAC. But don't let their record fool you, man. This game is riding. This team is riding a two game win streak right now beat Grambling and Alcorn, and head coach Terry Sims, like I said, could change the entire perception of the season with a giant upset this weekend that would give them a three-game win streak to end the season and extend their win streak over FAMU, which is the next thing we got to – I mean – we got to talk about this. This series has an extremely deep and rich history that stretches back to 1925, guys. The Rattlers lead the series 50-24, to 24, one tie, but the Wildcats are in the midst of a nine-game win streak. This could be the 10th consecutive win for Bethune-Cookman over FAMU this weekend. The Rattlers have not won this game since 2010. I mean... That everything's riding on on it this weekend. I mentioned on Scotty's roundtable that I was in seventh grade the last time FAMU won a game against Bethune Cookman. So it's been a long time coming. This Bethune senior class wants to be the next class to never lose to FAMU, while Marquise Bell and, and the senior class for FAMU are looking to make a statement and looking to get their first win over Bethune Cookman. So this game could not be any bigger. But let's get into the game now. Now that we've set how the stage and how big this one is, the key for the Rattlers this weekend, we'll start with FAMU. Could be one of a few different things. I mean, this you could point to the defense, you could point to the passing game, you could point to Bishop Bon, you know, Bishop Bonnet. For me, I think the key for Florida AM this weekend is balance. I don't think you need to focus too much on the pass game, the run game. I think you should be as balanced as possible this weekend. And the number one key should be let your playmakers make plays. You have too many playmakers in your wide receiving core, too many playmakers at running back to really just kind of hone down a key to one thing. You should say if you're if you're one of our top playmakers, you need to have a game this weekend and go prove why you're one of the top players on this team. We've lost nine straight. It's time for something to change, and it's going to be on, on you guys to change it. You look at Bishop Bonin at running back. You have to trust him. you got to trust that deep wide receiving core to go be athletes against this Bethune defense that ranks ninth in the SWAC in total defense. 
you have an opportunity here to have a big game, go have a big game and show and show, you know, the country what that you can respond in the biggest moments. Now, we'll start with the passing attack for FAMU. You know, it's sixth in the SWAC right now, about 222 yards per game. And McKay has, Rashawn McKay has slowly improved week in and week out at this quarterback spot. Last week had his best performance by far, had a giant game against UAPB. But for the season, over 2,000 yards passing, 19 touchdowns, only four picks. He's top five in the conference in passing yards, passing touchdowns, top six in efficiency. And Rashawn McKay has to have a big game this weekend. You have to be able to, like I said, be a playmaker. This defense has given up a lot of points at times. Make sure to make sure to push the ball down the field. Don't turn the ball over. And the number one thing is be efficient. That's one thing that McKay has struggled with at times this year is being efficient with the football. That's something I want to see this weekend is McKay be more efficient because you have the athletes. I think Xavier Smith, Jamari Sharid, David Mandigo, these guys can go create separation on the outside against a, a secondary that they should have the they should have the advantage over. So just make sure to be a distributor. You don't have to do anything special if you're McKay. Get the ball to your playmakers on the outside. Let them go make the plays. You look at Xavier Smith and over 540 yards, almost 50 catches on the year. I mean, that's fourth in the swack in receptions. But then Jamari Sharid, man, this guy has been electric this year. Almost 50 catches for almost 500 yards, nine receiving touchdowns. That's top three in the swack right now. And he's top five in the swack in receptions as well. So I think Sharid, Sharid and Smith have to be the go-to guys this weekend for FAMU. Let them make – because I don't think there's a DB on but them Cookman that can hold either one of these guys down. Let them go make play, make, go be playmakers on the outside. And if you're Rashawn McKay, just be calm in the pocket – deliver the ball where it's supposed to be and don't make, don't force things and get turnovers. That's the, that's like the number one and two things for this passing attack this weekend. Now I also, and I've mentioned it in the Southern preview, we did Kamari young at tight end could be an X factor in the red zone. I think fam, you needs to utilize him once they get into Bethune territory Four receiving touchdowns for him, had a big play against Southern. I think he's a matchup nightmare in the red zone, and they need to utilize that this weekend. But the rushing attack, man, what? there's not anything I can say about the rushing attack that I haven't already said about Bishop Bonnet and these guys. They're top five in the SWAC in rushing, in rushing yards per game with over 150. Bishop Bonnet has been electric. I know it's a tough year to be a newcomer in the SWAC. There's probably like five, six guys that have a, that probably deserve it any other year. But Bishop Bonnet with over 800 yards rushing, over six yards per carry, and four rushing touchdowns, he's had a giant year. And then also Terrell Jennings as well being that rotational piece. But if you're fam you, you just have to trust Bonnet to go make plays. He's done it week in and week out for you. So I don't see why it needs to change against this Bethune-Cookman defense. You've seen Gary Quarles and some other running backs have big days against Bethune. I think Bishop Bonnet's going to be that next one and has to be that next one for the Rattlers to win this game. You look at what he's done already, man. Top three in yards per game, top five in yards per carry, and rushing touchdowns in the SWAC in his first ever year in this conference. I think Bishop Bonnet has to have a big day to aid McKay in this passing attack against this Bethune defense. I think if if FAMU can go over, probably I would say there's a there's a possibility right now that I think FAMU could get 200 rushing and 200 passing, and that would be the perfect game plan for this FAMU offense. But I think 150 rushing is the minimum they have to have this weekend to feel comfortable in this game. Now, for Bethune-Cookman, man, the key for this team is going to have to be establishing the rushing attack. I think when things are clicking on the ground for Bethune, this offense really goes to a new level. And last week really proved that with one of their best performances of the season with almost 200 yards on the ground and four touchdowns. So this, but this weekend is going to be a very tough matchup for Bethune Cookman because FAMU ranks first in the SWAC in rushing defense with less than 95 yards per game allowed and less than three yards per carry allowed this season. When you look at this rushing attack for Bethune, 
They're seventh in the SWAC with about 122 rushing yards per game. But Kushan Bird has had some solid performances this season. Over 600 yards rushing this year, five rushing touchdowns. I think he has to have a giant game this weekend. You have to aid this quarterback, this quarterback room for Bethune Cookman by at least making this FAMU defense be honest. And everyone knows establishing the rushing attack helps you in pass protection, which is really is something that Bethune's going to need. And we'll get to that in just a minute. But then also Jimmy Robinson, the third over 250 and six rushing touchdowns. That's tied second in the swag. And then when Devin Black's in at quarterback, He's a factor with his legs, too, almost seven yards per carry and a rushing touchdown this year. That's something that's going to test these FAMU linebackers this weekend is when Devin Black gets out the pocket, if and when he gets in at quarterback. Now, that's the reason I picked the run game. The run game helps both of these quarterbacks that can potentially see Tom this weekend really establish things in this offense. Over 218 yards passing per game for Bethune right now. Shannon Patrick and Devin Black are going to be the guys. They both struggle at times with their accuracy, and Patrick has struggled with turnovers at times. But both of these guys have have had moments where you can see them being the guy to lead this team into this matchup. So I'm not sure who's going to start this weekend. I would lean probably Patrick, but we're good. we're going to have to see. I mean, they've went back and forth all season long. But for me, I think we're going to see a little bit of both guys because what Black can do with his legs is extremely dynamic, and I think it puts a lot of pressure on this FAMU defense. But everyone knows the name you have to know when talking about this Bethune offense, Kamari Everett, man. this He has been the best tight end in the SWAC, and it's, it's not even close. 45 catches, over 800 yards receiving, 18 yards per catch as a tight end, and eight receiving touchdowns. At times, he has been the sole offense for this Bethune-Cookman team. He's going to have to have a big game. And even though I didn't pick it as my matchup to watch, I'm extremely interested to see how he matches up against his FAMU secondary. How does he match up with a Marquise Bell and Antoine Collier? I want to see how FAMU's defense schemes to keep Everett's impact at a, at, at a minimum at least now daryl powell and dylan lee are also going to be big big keys for this bethune passing attack but for bethune cookman you have to run the ball because you cannot you you cannot have your defense out there forever against fam you and you also need to establish your pace of the game come out and put some pressure on this FAMU offense to score. If you allow FAMU's defense to keep you under 10 points in this game, there, there's going to be no there's no chance because your offense is always going to be facing pressure against this defense. you got to do the same thing for FAMU's offense. Make this a shootout, and I've said it on the roundtable. The, the further this goes, the higher scoring this becomes, the better it is for Bethune-Cookman because – you could say their offense is just as talented as that FAMU offense. So for me, that's going to be the key for Bethune-Cookman. Run the ball, establish your will, and help out these quarterbacks against a very, very talented FAMU defense. Now, the matchup to watch, you know, it is is easy for me. And I'm an off, and I'm a you know, I'm a lineman, so I like I, I kind of have a bias when sometimes picking these matchups to watch. But for me, it's going to be the FAMU defensive line against this Bethune Cookman offensive line. You look at this offensive line that ranks sixth in the SWAC and sacks allowed, only with the 20 sacks allowed this season. They've never allowed more than four in a game, and they've never allowed more than nine tackles for loss in a game as well. And they have great size up front. You look at Nicholas Rue, 6'7", 263, Jamal Savage, Jordan Cardi, both over 6'6", both over 320 pounds. This offensive line has a lot of size, and they, they, do, they do a great job at times pass protecting and paving the way for the run. The offensive line really hasn't been the main problem for Bethune Cookman. So for me, I, they have to step up. They have to impose their will on this FAMU defensive line, which has some guys that are a bit undersized for that end position. You look at, at an Isaiah Land, who's not the heaviest type guy. So if Rue, Savage, Cardi, and this offensive line can establish their will, that will really help Bethune out. But you have to protect Black and Shannon Patrick. If if FAMU just has a sack party and they're able to wreak havoc in the backfield, 
that is going to spell a lot of trouble for Bethune Cookman. You have to protect your quarterbacks and you have to pave the way for some sort of offensive consistency. They struggled early against Alcorn with that and they were able to turn it around. And then last week against a very good Grambling defense, they were really able to establish their will on the offensive side of the ball. And so for me, that's going, that's why this matchup is so important. They have to win this matchup if you're Bethune Cookman. Now, FAMU's defensive line, man. Everyone knows about this defensive line. It's right up there with Jackson State's is one of the best in the SWAC. They're second in the SWAC in sacks with 34 sacks over the first 10 games and over 80 tackles for loss. And if FAMU gets after Bethune Cookman in the backfield, it's going to spell major issues. And they could really force some of these quarterbacks to make the mistake. Now, the defense has racked up two or more sacks in every game this season. They have four games with four or more sacks, including their five week, their five sack performance against UAPB last weekend. And it starts with Isaiah Lamb, man. This guy has been unstoppable this season. 17 sacks, 23 and a half tackles for loss, and 40 tackles this season, along with three forced fumbles. He has been a game wrecker, and he's going to be someone that you have to watch this weekend. If he can do what he's done all season long, Bethune's in a lot of trouble because you also have Savian Williams on the other side. Four and a half sacks, eight, eight tackles for loss. Deontay Williams, Gentle Hunt. All these guys can be game changers, but Isaiah Land is the number one X factor in this matchup. If you're Bethune Cookman, I'm trying to make any other defensive lineman other than Land beat me, and that's going to be the key. So, looking at this game, and I know there's a lot of people, you know, at the round table, there were a lot of people commenting that they had Bethune winning this game and stealing this one, and that FAMU was going to overlook them. For me, if you're FAMU, the two wins these past two weeks for Bethune, for Bethune, you shouldn't be overlooking this team at all. And you have the pressure of trying to make the playoffs for the first time in a while. For me, FAMU's not overlooking this one. I think this team's well aware of the streak that is that is currently going on. I think this game is probably a bit closer early than people think. I think this is a back-and-forth game early, but for me – Bishop Bonnet, Rashawn McKay, Shareed, Smith at the wide receiver spot. These guys are going to be too good. I think they make the plays late to win this game. And I trust Isaiah Land, Marquise Bell, this defense, to make some plays down the stretch, force some turnovers from Patrick and Black to pull away late. I have FAMU winning this game, winning their first Florida Classic since 2010 30 to 17 this weekend over Bethune Cookman. So a big win for Willie Simmons team. And for me, I think FAMU probably has a great chance to slide into the playoffs as well. Like I said on, on my mailbag, if you are a FAMU fan, ETSU and Kennesaw State have to be your biggest, you have to be their biggest supporters this weekend. If those two teams win, FAMU is almost guaranteed to get into the playoffs this weekend. So make sure to pay attention to those games as well. But I got FAMU 30, Bethune Cookman 17. Guys, go ahead and comment your score predictions below. Make sure to like the video and subscribe. And if you're traveling down to the Florida Classic this weekend, man, I hope you'll have a blast and everyone be safe down there. But for right now, guys, on the Blue Bloods, we are out. Mm -hmm.